Hello, I'm Kindo. It's Saturday, which means it's time for another Tidal Cycles video tutorial. Today, we will be talking about cutting. That's right, cutting. Specifically, the cut synth parameter in Tidal Cycles. Hope you enjoy. Hi. In this video, I am going to talk about the cut parameter in Tidal. And it's a pretty simple parameter to use, but I think it is a little misunderstood at times and a lot of questions come up about it. So I thought I would do a video. Here we go. Okay, so the cut parameter is uh, you use it when you want to stop a sample from playing when another sample starts. So the next sample cuts or chokes the previous sound. And this is useful if you have uh, long running samples or sounds and you, you don't want a lot of bleed between them. So I've got a few long uh, samples here that are all, these are all custom samples that are not a part of the standard dirt sample library, but um, uh, some samples that I use and I'm just gonna throw these in a pattern here really quick um, I'm just gonna make this up so yeah okay so then let's just see what this sounds like not necessarily bad but uh, each each of these folders, so in, in Dirt, each of these sample names is a folder, uh, and they contain multiple different samples inside of them. So I'm going to add the end parameter to randomly select uh, from one of, of 10 samples in each folder. And when I do that, it's going to use more sounds, and, and the bleed between all these samples is going to start to become more apparent. So here's what the what this sounds like. So depending on your taste, uh, that may or may not sound bad, but I'm going to at least make the case right now that it's not good. Um, there's a lot of sounds bleeding into each other and um, we're using up a lot of, um, especially in the low end, a lot of frequency space that's going to make mixing it kind of hard and it's going to sound kind of, kind of gross, um, unless that's what you want to do. But I'm going to make the case that we don't want to do that right now. So, um, yeah, so all we have to do with cut is specify a number, which is kind of like a, the assignment of a cut group number. In this case, I'm using cut group number one. And all of these sounds in the pattern are gonna be assigned to cut group one. And all sounds in the same group cut each other. You can kind of think of it like a collision group in a physics engine or something. Uh, but if you've never done programming in a physics engine, I guess that doesn't help. So let's ditch that analogy. Okay, so all of these sounds are in cut group one when I specify this and they're gonna cut each other or truncate each other. So now it sounds like this. So we've now taken that, that messy pattern and really cleaned it up. So here's the original. And here's the cut version. I think that's pretty useful. So now the next thing we can do is we can start to use different cut group numbers. But there's an important thing to know, and that is that cut groups are um, shared between different connections to dirt. So here we have D1. If we create another pattern with D2 and put some stuff in it and assign cut one there, it will affect the cut over in D1. So if I just put like some um, K and S or kick and snare, 
I just start doing this, you'll hear the two patterns are gonna truncate each other. Which is not necessarily what you wanna do. So you can create a different cut group in a different pattern. In this case, the kick and snare down on D2 here will be cut group number two, and the original pattern will be cut group number one. Now my kick and snares aren't necessarily long samples and I don't really have the bleeding problem, but um, I could replace them with uh, something that goes long. I have KL, which is a long kick. And uh, what's another long running sample here? I'm not sure, we'll keep it as a, as a snare. So now we have these nice clean patterns where we, we don't get a lot of bleed. Um, and so kind of thinking about your mix, I guess this kind of gets into the territory of, of being conscious of your mix and how things sound, um, for ex especially for really bass heavy sounds like long kick drums or sub bass notes or any bass note, when you start layering those things on top of each other, you, you start to get a lot of kind of muddled sound and so cut can really be effective that way uh okay and of course if you use stack which if you've seen me do stuff before i use stack a lot you can uh of course put different cut groups i, I have to talk slower when i type like this that's funny uh okay you can put multiple cut groups inside of your stack too and there's that's just like using a, a d1 d2 kind of thing um so your stack can have multiple cut groups with the same effect um yeah uh so there's that then um the next useful thing is using a negative one value for cut now negative one is a very special value you can't do negative two or negative three and so on. But negative one itself is a very special value. And what it does is it will cut only samples from the same folder. So instead of, you know, with cut group one, CPR would cut AL stab, 4K would cut CPR, and sub would cut 4K in that order. If we do negative one, only AL stab will cut itself, CPR will cut itself, 4K will cut itself, and sub will cut itself. So in the same pattern, uh, only samples from the same folder will cut themselves. And so now it sounds like this. Let's get rid of stack here because we don't need stack anymore. All right, so here's what that sounds like. So that's that's kind of useful. It, it's in a way kind of a compromise between no cutting at all and cutting everything. It it allows for some bleed between dissimilar samples, and it maybe feels a little bit more natural. And maybe that's useful to you. Uh, it certainly is stuff that I find useful in what I do. The next thing is having a pattern of cut values. And this is something that I had never tried until uh, Daniel Carlson on the title Slack channel uh, showed me this or showed the channel this. And you can actually have a pattern of cut values. And what this will do is it will, um, as you may guess, put everything in cut group one in the first quarter of the cycle, everything in cut group two on the second quarter, everything in cut group three in the third quarter and so on. So you can have a pattern of cut values. So in our pattern here, we've got four samples. In this case, AL stab is going to end up mapping to this cut group one. CPR will fire when we're on cut group two. So this cut pattern and the sound pattern are firing at the same cycle speed. So those align like that. 
Uh, we could get some strange interaction if we were to, you know, change the speed of, of one pattern versus the other. It's, it's hard to kind of perceive exactly what the effect is, but the idea is that we're making the cut group change and we're causing the bleed of the samples to happen differently over time. It's, it's just kind of a detailed, subtle effect, which, which can result in some interesting stuff. Um, the other thing you can do is do some more extreme, like random selection of cut values, like so. This is something that uh, Daniel Carlson also showed as well. Uh, just pick a random cut value between one and five. I guess if we want to be super fancy, we could do that. So this will pick a random cut value between one and five. We could just do three or just two. So with a random choice of cut values, you introduce some random truncation of samples, which, so your sample may or may not get truncated. And that can, again, is it's another way of kind of allowing some samples to breathe and bleed a little bit. And at other times it'll clean up the sound and, and take some long running samples out. So it's kind of a, a nice, I don't know, it's a way you can play with it. Um, yeah. So I guess that's really all I wanted to show. So in review, we can cut with a single value, which will cut everything in that same cut group. We can cut with a minus one, which is a special value in which only samples from the same folder or the same name will be, will truncate themselves and won't be truncated by other, um, other samples. We can do patterns of cut values, like so. And we can even do random cut values. I used choose in that previous example. It's randomly choosing between one and two. Of course, we could do IRAND2 or IRAND3 that would have a similar effect. All right, that's it. If you've got some pesky long running samples, now you've got a way to deal with them. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.